ABC, Dylan here with Noble Records uh, for another video. First off, soundtrack here is Led Zeppelin, Riot House. Um, this is a recorded live at Alexander Palace, uh, London, December 22nd, 1972. Pretty, uh, pretty common bootleg. Great stuff on there. Um, so this video is a little different than my regular ones. Usually I'll you know, do a video on one of my big hauls. Haven't had any big hauls in the past week, but I have had three small ones. So, this is uh, the three small hauls. Uh, the reason why I do these videos is, is uh, so you guys can kind of see the process, and then also so I can look back on them and remember the stories of what happened. So, um, it's kind of just as much for me as it is for you, but also I hope you guys enjoy it, and if you're vinyl diggers, across the country and across the world maybe it'll help you give give you some pointers and stuff on how to find some stuff so anyways the first uh kind of mini haul i got was uh saw this guy's ad on craigslist he had some audio stuff as as well as some um a few he said he had like a small stack of records uh, and so here's a picture of the ad um he had some speakers a turntable uh, the main thing I was interested in was the receiver. Um, he had a Technics uh, SA6400, uh, which was a um, it's a quadraphonic receiver. I've wanted a quadraphonic receiver forever, so that one I'm keeping. But I went and I got it. Um, he had some other components. The he had a turntable. It was a dual. Um, 1115 was a. Uh, it's a turntable. It doesn't work. Uh, the platter doesn't spin. I think it might just be a belt, but I'm actually not sure if it's a direct drive or not, so I gotta take it apart. Um, he also had a set of realistic speakers that are sweet, and I'm actually gonna keep those because I need them to finish my quadraphonic setup with the new receiver. He had another set of uh, Marac speakers, and then he had um, another set of uh, drivers, which were, they're called Coral. Um, CX-10s, I think is what they're called. Here's a picture of them. They're the gnarliest looking drivers you've ever seen. Um, they're J Japanese made, and from what I see online, I think they're 1958. I don't know anything about these. If you guys know anything about them, let me know. It's the kind of thing where I don't need them, I'm gonna sell them, but I really don't know enough about them to even know what to ask for them. Uh, similar things online have gone for a lot, and then some things aren't have gone for very little, so don't know. Anyway, so that was the first one. The stack of records was nothing right home about. The best record was uh, uh, Live Rust by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. And then the rest of them were like, there's a couple monkeys ones in there and stuff. Nothing great. Uh, second vinyl haul, which was, that was, I guess, a vintage audio haul. Um, the second one was, okay. <laughs> this is a long story. But um, this guy, I've been talking to him for about a month. Um, about a month ago I went to a sale he was having he had a three day sale out at his yard in, Char in the middle of Charlotte he did not advertise it well um, he said he didn't sell anything for three days he was out there for three days with, with over a thousand records and didn't sell anything so that's pretty bad uh, but uh, I saw um, I somehow stumbled upon his place and found it and I was there on the last day, and he said, what he did was he went and he priced everything at median Discogs price. So he took the time to look through Discogs and price everything at the median price. So for me, I wanted some things for myself uh, that I might have bought on Discogs anyways, but there was really no, nothing huge that I could make money on. So I picked a few out, and I'm like, man, I, I could do a lot better on some of these if you, if you, you cut me some slack. And he's like, well, I'm ready to be done with them. He said, if you if you buy, you know, more than five hundred dollars worth, you know, you can have everything at a quarter of what I have it listed at. So I was like, wow. So seventy five percent off. So I got a big load from him. It was awesome. That was a huge haul. That one was awesome. I don't know if you guys remember that video. It was from uh, maybe a month or two ago. So then after that, since then, I left some stuff behind that I really kind of regretted because everything was really cheap. And I've been talking to him and calling him and texting him, and he's like, "Yeah, you can come back and and do. I'll do the same deal. You can come back. I'll do the same deal." 
and we actually negotiated a price for everything, um, everything he had left. Well, he went back and forth. He really uh, unstable uh, communicator, I guess you'd say, but he, he um, kept going back on what he said, saying, no, I can't really do that. And, and every no, nothing he said you, held water. I mean, it was all over the place. So um, uh, then I finally cornered him on a time I could come back and look, and he's like, actually, you know, I'll let somebody else look and they picked out a bunch of the good stuff that's what I think he was trying to tiptoe around so I really kind of pissed me off that he did that because we had had a deal and uh, but I know the guy that got the stuff he's a good guy whatever they come and go he's a friend so not a big deal so I did go back and I was able to find some stuff that was decent enough to where nothing really to write home about but I was able to make probably make a few bucks on some of the stuff um, here is a video of that stuff <laughs> third and final haul was one I had last night um, a guy <laughs> emailed me a couple weeks ago it was very vague he said hey I saw um, you had a flyer somewhere uh, he said I have 200 classic rock albums in my basement love to sell them uh, they're just sitting there you know I don't need them uh, and so he his name was Marco and uh, I emailed him back, didn't hear anything else. It was kind of one of those things where it's like 200 classic rock albums. That's awesome. I mean, like for a reseller, you know, it, it makes you think, okay, well, was it Seals and Croft or was it Led Zeppelin, you know? But um, so I emailed him back, emailed him back. I kind of had forgotten about it, didn't think much about it because he wouldn't, he wouldn't contact uh, me again. And then yesterday, man, something just stuck in my crawl. As, as they might say in the South, but something really just like, man, I gotta find this guy. You know, he's got these records in his basement. He lives nearby. I need to just find his information. Uh, so I, his, his name, he had sort of a unique name. Uh, his name was Marco. I won't share his last name because, you know, I don't have his permission, but um, found him on Facebook was what I thought was him. Um, he was a biker. So I was like, man, it's going to be a good collection if he's a biker. Um, he's a biker. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I sent him a message on Facebook. I don't do Facebook, so I really don't understand how it works most of the time. But uh, I sent him a message on Facebook. He wasn't reading the messages. It didn't even look like he was receiving the messages. So that was, you know, a day went by or so, and I didn't think I was going to hear back from him. So I messaged his wife, and I said, hey, this is weird. I'm sorry. I got an email from your husband saying he wanted to sell some records. Is there a phone number I can reach him at? You know, and she didn't respond to me, and I was like, "Well, screw it." I mean, it didn't look like she was getting the messages either, so I was like, "Whatever." These people, um, and so uh, finally, yesterday afternoon, she uh, sent me a message and said, "Here's his phone number." So I called him, and he said, "Yeah, you can come look at him," and and uh, went over there, and he had a uh, gosh, man, it was crazy. He had him in his basement. But the bottom three st steps of his basement, like to go down in his basement, were broken. So he put a, a like a two by six on the stairs, and so you had to walk down the two by six. So I was like, "Crap! I'm gonna have to carry records out of here. This is gonna suck." So I get down there, and he's got um, he's got a couple turntables, he's got a receiver, um, and he's got about two three hundred records. I don't know. So start looking through the records, and uh, we we come on a become uh, you know we settle on a deal uh, for the records and a turntable and a receiver. Uh, the turntable here's a picture of the turntable. The turntable is a Sony. Um, I don't know if you call it eleven ten. It's a one 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 zero um, uh, uh, turntable. 
And then the receiver uh, was a, let's see, I think it was a STR uh, 6046, I think is what it's called. Uh, that's a Sony receiver. Uh, you know, with receivers, I'm usually pretty cautious because half the time they don't work. Um, and so this one lit up. So I was like, well, uh, we th threw on the receiver and the turntable on the deal and he was happy with it. I was happy with it, and uh, he had a also had like hooked up to a sound system. I was like, "You want to sell that that turntable over there?" It was a Technics SA220, and um, or it was a SL220, something like that. Here's a picture of it, and uh, I said, "You want to sell that?" And he's like, "No, I really don't want to sell that. Uh, you know, it's connected to my system. I really want to keep it." So we let up all the records. I was like, "Yeah, whatever. I'm respectful. Whatever." load up all the records, the sound stuff, and get in the car, and as I'm driving off, I was thinking, well, what the heck is he going to play on? He doesn't have any records anymore. So I just stopped, I was like, hey, Marco, you don't have any records. You want me to give you some records back so you can listen to them? Because if you have that turntable, he's like, no, I'll sell you the turntable. So we went back down there and got the turntable, and I bought that turntable. Too, so. Anyway, it was kind of funny. So um, here is uh, the collection the conditions all over the place. Some of the stuff's in really good shape. Some of the stuff's in really rough shape. Uh, everything. I mean, there was there was about thirty uh, albums that would were dollar bin albums. Uh, the rest of the stuff was actually pretty good. So um, this is the stuff that was in there. <laughs> guys hope you enjoyed this video I try to keep it as short as I could I know my last video was almost an hour long if you didn't make it through that video that's totally cool no hard feelings I don't even know why I made that video I was feeling loopy I guess I don't know anyways uh, but stay tuned I got some other big hauls that I've got leads on that I'm trying to work out um, as always I gotta pop up this weekend so anyways as usual if you see anything you like holla maybe I can hook you up so Anyways, y'all take care. See you next time.